Hey, exciting times with less than three weeks until we can explore again, one of my favorite parts of the game. I couldn't resist and I did a sneak peek into what revamped Cutlass has to offer. So I guess I'll be sharing my first impressions in this video and give you some tips and tricks too. At first I didn't think all of Cutlass keys would be upskilled, but the entire zone is now level 65 plus, so we have another endgame zone. On the surface, it might not be such a big deal. It's just another zone, but after analyzing the new design choices, I was quite impressed. Let's first start with the aesthetic and world building in general. The zone gives me a vibe between Ebenskill and Reekwater. It has the shores and flat parts of Reekwater, but also the large mountains of Ebenskill. They make use with these elevations very well, having the most important points of interest being elevated or just placed up high in the mountains. This will make for some pretty vista points on both ends being on the ground and up high. What I was really impressed with was all the point of interest were built from the ground up. So a lot of effort is put into this zone to not make it feel repetitive. I also found quite a few indoor areas. They usually avoided this years ago because of the issues it had with rendering lighting and it would just flicker. In all my years of playing New World, I also haven't noticed any visual storytelling or picking up similarities. But in this zone, I actually picked up on a few things. So there are these orange crystals and they basically act like conductors and it causes the area to have a lightning storm. The storm can even spawn on your character, which is pretty cool. So you have to keep on moving. The amount of polish with fire, fog and lights in this zone is also far beyond any zone that is in the game so far. It feels really polished. And talking about polish, they made a town with NPCs that wander around and play emotes. This is something they haven't done yet before. And let's not forget about the best part, the ghost ship. Sadly, we didn't get any new mobs. They are reskinned. I'm fine with reskin mobs since a while ago they didn't even do that and I was complaining about it when Barnacles, that dungeon came out. We fought the Blackheart pirates in that dungeon and the mobs were the exact same as the starter mobs. You know, at least they reskinned it this time. So that's some improvements for sure. So what is there to do in the zone? Well, even though it's mostly a PvP zone, there are some non-PvP things to do. Like I mentioned, not the entire zone is PvP. There's also 16 different repeatable quests that you could farm for raw gold, a little bit of standing, and doubloons. This is a nice content philosophy change that reminds me more of the way World of Warcraft designs content, but it still doesn't seem worth doing these quests and spam them with how lacking the rewards are. Also, about doubloons, this is a new currency for the Wall of Fortune. This is where you can buy some caches to slot machines some gear. You could also farm doubloons from mobs and chests and cutlass keys, even in the non-PvP part. Obviously, the best way to farm doubloons is still in the free-for-all PvP zone, but I'm glad they give an option for non-PvP too. Just in case a musket company is locking down the entire zone, teaming up, because that will surely not happen, right? There are some encounters in the PvP zone too. I tried to do them as level 30, but you can already guess how it turned out. I'm not sure what you will get from this, probably just some doubloons, maybe some gear. There are also certain chests in the zone that require a key. You can make these at the Well of Fortune once a week. And if you're lucky enough to get a golden coconut, you can make a 725 piece. There's still a lot of RNG involved, so you might get shitty perks. And then we also have gathering. So there's a lot of resource nodes in the PvP zone, but most of them are cursed. You can tell by the effect they have. Whenever you gather those, you will get cursed resources. And if you happen to die with those in the PvP zone, well, you will lose half of it. How you can cleanse them is by escaping and getting outside of the PvP zone. This is also the same with doubloons. And that's all about the zone, really. It might seem like this zone is not big of a deal at all, but it's at a level of polish they haven't delivered before. And the shift in content design with plenty of repeatable quests, the addition of NPCs being more than just an empty husk, and the interactive vault mechanics, I would say this zone is amazing and probably the best zone yet. It just misses a few things, but that could be said about every zone in the game right now, but I'll leave that for another time. Thank you so much for watching. This is all I have for today. And until next time, later.